One of the most lethal execution devices used throughout history was the guillotine. It's most closely linked to the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror, in which thousands of people in France lost their heads, within a number of months as they were suspected of being supporters of the monarchy. It was even the device that took the head of the French king and queen, but despite its close link to France, the idea of a beheading machine such as the guillotine had been around for centuries before, around the world. There are many different types of guillotine, which have been used throughout the years, for the purpose of taking someone's head clean off, and some of these were more effective than others. But what are the different guillotines used? Join us today as we look at this, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One of the first examples of a guillotine style device emerged in the 13th century. One description of the beheading machine states, Within these three openings are the hallows set for them, and behold what I would do to them if their three heads were therein. She setteth her hand towards the openings and draweth forth a pin that was fastened into the wall, and a cutting blade of steel droppeth down, of steel sharper than any razor, and closeth up the three openings. Even this will I cut off their heads, when they shall set them into those three openings, thinking to adore the hallows that are beyond. But in England there was a device known as the Halifax gibbet. This was used in Yorkshire during the 16th century, and it was an alternate to execution by axe or sword. This was a large wooden structure which had a blade axe that fell through the grooves onto the head of a condemned person. It was said that 100 people were beheaded in Halifax using the gibbet, and the first use of the device could even be in the 13th century. It was used for condemned people who were accused of theft, which was considered very serious, and 52 known people were executed on the device, but there was undoubtedly more victims of the Halifax gibbet. One problem with this, though, was that it was very close to the county boundary, and the punishment could only be carried out inside the Forest of Hardwick area. There were accounts of two men cheating the executioner by escaping when the blade was released, and they then ran off and crossed the boundary out of the forest, and were technically free from their punishment. One man, though, would return, and he would then be executed on the device later. But it was said of the gibbet that, in the never end of the sliding block is an axe keyed or fastened with an iron into the wood, which being drawn up to the top of the frame is there fastened by a wooden pin, and to the middest of which pin also there is a long rope fastened that cometh down among the people, so that when the offender hath made his confession and hath laid his neck over the nevermost block, every man there present doth either take hold of the rope or put it forth his arm, so near to the same as he can get, in token that he is willing to see true justice executed, and pulling out the pin in this manner, the head block wherein the axe is fastened, doth fall down with such violence, that if the neck of the transgressor were so big as that of a bull, it would be cut in the sunder at a stroke, and roll from the body at a huge distance. It's undoubtedly that the gibbet inspired the guillotine, but in Scotland there was also a very similar device used in Edinburgh. The maiden was very similar to the Halifax gibbet, and it was brought around during the reign of Mary the Queen of Scots, and it was used for the last time in 1716. It was made from oak, and also had a very similar axe blade that fell through side grooves, and the Scots made this device, as the sword for the executioners was worn out, and they became fed up of having to spend money to loan an executioner's sword. The device would be dismantled easily for executions, and it would then be made again when the time came. The regent James Douglas would, in 1581, lose his head on the device, and it was known that this was definitely inspired by the Halifax gibbet. More than 150 people were executed on the Maiden, and this included a number of notable people, and the last execution using it took place on the 30th of June 1716, as someone was condemned for the murder of a pub owner during a brawl. With the Maiden there was another axe blade attached, but then when the guillotine was created in France this was changed. The guillotine would emerge after the use of the breaking wheel in France was banned, and a committee including Antoine Louis, the king's doctor, was summoned to help create a device for executions. It was said that King Louis XVI recommended the use of a slanted blade rather than a crescent one, as he was an amateur locksmith who was interested in this. But the guillotine years after would take his head clean off. The first guillotine execution was performed on Nicolas Jacques Pelletier, a highwayman, on the 25th of April 1792, but the device was considered a successful and humane form of execution, 
And to begin with in France, the public did not like it, as it was too clinical and offered little excitement for the public as the execution was performed very quickly. But the guillotine would continue to fall after the execution of Louis XVI and his queen Marie Antoinette. During the reign of terror, thousands lost their heads on the device, and anyone who had suspicions that a neighbour or a friend was a fan of the deceased monarchy would then tell the authorities, and these people were then taken to their executions very quickly. It was a shocking time and a time of great fear, and the guillotine in France would be used in the decades and centuries after. These continued to be performed in public, as the final public execution was the guillotine of Eugène Weidmann in 1939, which is shocking considering this was not long ago. But there were problems with crowds photographing the execution, so the guillotine continued to be used behind closed doors in prisons, with the final execution being performed on murderer Hamida Dajandubi on the 10th of September 1977. But the Germans would use guillotines and beheading devices too, and they looked at what the French were doing, and they would then make their own tweaks to the guillotine. These were known as falbiles, and these instead of being made from wood, were made from metal, and they had heavier blades than the French ones, and shorter upright devices. The executioners in Germany could take the head off someone very efficiently, and they would boast that within seconds they could execute someone. Records would claim that around seven seconds from entering execution chamber, a blade would fall. A metal screen was also added to the foul bile, as this would conceal the executioner seeing the head being taken clean off. The head would then fall into a bucket, as with the guillotine. But the Nazis and Hitler would use the foul bile between 1933 and 1945, and it even replaced beheading by axe. And this would fall upon the necks of at least 16,500 prisoners inside of Nazi prisons. Anyone who was said to have opposed the Nazis would be taken to the guillotine following their execution after being found guilty of treason at the People's Court. But in other lands, guillotines and beheading devices were used, including many in Europe in countries such as Belgium, Switzerland and Greece. In Sweden, the guillotine would replace beheading using axe in 1905, and the devices were seen even in different countries in Asia. But the guillotine is an execution device of the past, it has been considered controversial, and it's not entirely known how the device resulted in a painless death. There are many who express concerns that the device led to a long period of suffering, especially as someone waited on death row. But there were many eyewitnesses who testified that the head would twitch after death, showing that someone could be alive seconds after the blade fell. The research on this is interesting and deserves a video of its own, but the guillotine as an execution device was inspired by what emerged in Britain centuries before. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.